if I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a, it's not a request. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you slept good and all that and a bag of chips. Welcome to my stream. Um, I'm excited to get started with today's project. We're going to be doing history's probably history's most beloved mythological creature, and that would be uh, the dragon. In fact, I've got it right here, my beautiful purple dragon against a blue sky. It's lovely. I, I would say that dragons are probably one of my favorite creatures. Um, they're so easy to to make <laughs> and i'll explain more about that later on but uh, yeah that's what we're going to be doing today i hope that you can hear me okay for those in the chat um if you can't hear me let me know i'll make some adjustments i've been having some issues with my usb port and my microphone like it'll just drop out and so i don't want it to sound like it's just running through my computer my computer fan sent, tends to sound like this jumbo jet engine so i don't want that if that's the case but anyway yes thank you so much for being here and um <clears throat> i just thought it'd be fun to hang out i haven't live streamed in a little while and uh, in fact i did have a guest scheduled for today but something came up and it wasn't um wasn't able to do it and that's okay you know life happens it's all good <clears throat> and uh, we'll still have fun anyway and uh, I am having actually another guest coming on next week. And uh, for those that follow on Twitter and maybe know her YouTube channel, I'm going to have a troubled green um, on here next Saturday if all goes according to plan. So that should be fun. She's a very intelligent young woman, <clears throat> knows a lot about Tolkien. And I'm sure we're going to be talking about that, Lord of the Rings, all that kind of stuff and the things that are going on on the interwebs about Lord of the Rings, um, and the new stuff coming out. But either way, we're going to have fun. We're not going to be painting Lord of the Rings, but I won't tell you what we are painting just to keep it a nice secret, keep it a surprise. But uh, yeah, so anyway, before we get into the actual painting, the actual process, please be sure to uh, hit the like button if you haven't already. I'd greatly appreciate that. And if you want to find other ways to support the channel, there are links down below. If you want to become a Patreon member, I give a lot of exclusive behind the scenes um, imagery of what a projects I am currently working on and some projects that I never actually released to the masses strictly for patrons only. Um, but I also have a, a PayPal if you wanted to make a one-time donation. If you wanted to feed the artist, buy me some brushes because <laughs> I'm always going to be needing new brushes. But also there's, uh, you can check out my Etsy page where I do sell a lot of my artwork and I've got some new stuff coming to the shop this coming week. Um, if you follow me on Twitter um, and on Instagram, you can um, see a lot of the stuff that I'm in the process of making that I upload to my uh, Etsy account. So if you want an image, you can go ahead and grab some. That would be fantastic. Hey, Maria, good morning. I see you there. I hope everything's going well in your part of the world. And like I said, today we're going to be painting dragons, dragons. Hand clap for dragons. <laughs> I don't know what it is about these creatures that everybody is so drawn to, right? Is it just me or does it see... Hi. Is it just me or does it seem like everybody just kind of gravitates towards dragons? Now, while I do say that it's one of my favorite mythological creatures, I do have an all-time favorite. Okay. If you guys have a favorite, I would love to hear about it in the chat. But uh, my favorite is going to be most likely, I mean, between it's a tough tie between dragons and the beloved Pegasus. I think... Yeah, see, and Maria likes dragons. I think Pegasus says it's Pegasi. <laughs> it's one of those words. I'm not really sure what the plural form is. It gets a little complicated. Um, it's kind of like hippopotamuses. But anyway, um, I love a Pegasus. Like, I just, there's something about it. Unicorns are great, all that, whatever. I don't want a unicorn Pegasus. Good morning, Mrs. Nero. Good morning. I just want a flipping beautiful white and blue Pegasus from Hercules, Disney's Hercules. Like that is like my favorite. I don't know why. I'm not a big horse person, but a flying horse, 
Yes. <laughs> Let's have one of those, please. Um, but anyway, yeah. So if you guys have other creatures that you're really drawn to, there are all kinds. And we'll talk more about dragons as we go along. I'm going to go ahead and get started on my background. So I'm going to remove this. It's voila. A blank slate, a blank canvas. Um, I, a couple of years ago, actually just two, uh, back when the world shut down, everybody. Good morning, Rogue Disney. Hope you're doing well. Um, back in 2020, when the world shut down, um, we decided as a, like my family, we got, got together. We enjoy going to the Renaissance festivals, right? They're just super fun. And we, we do that every year as a family. Like we'll get together. We'll talk about our costumes. We'll already start planning, which we already are planning this morning or this morning. <laughs> it's a planning this year. And so we were really disheartened because COVID-19 and everything like that, that we were not able to go to the Renaissance Fair, you know? And um, we're like, how can we make this possible? This is what we love to do every year. And we started getting our friends to go with us. And um, so we decided, you know, to just do it ourselves. So we ended up having our own Renaissance Fair here Um where I live. And we went all out, like friends, like family members brought stuff, some friends brought stuff. And uh, good morning, Benjamin. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. We we're talking about dragons and I'm just sharing a story. And so we decided to have our own mini Renaissance fair. We didn't have too many people come just a couple of people. And we were like, how are we going to make this fun? How are we going to make this exciting? What are like our top favorite things that we enjoy doing at the Ren Fair that we could try to do here, right? A limited resources, limited personnel, right? So I decided to put on a, a interactive kind of like show slash lesson thing. I decided to talk about dragons. And uh, I did a lot of research on dragons. It was not easy. There were so many different forms of dragons that I was not aware of. And you get you get just persnickety people talking about dragons, right? Because there are, you know, like I, I understood that battleists are not dragons. They are serpentine creatures. So don't get that confused. And uh, there, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly. Is it a weirvern? A wyvern? Like that was the first time I'd ever heard of that. There's a drake. There's a weirm, worm, the lung dragon, the salamander, um, the hydra, of course. And then you've got the, like, there was like the, how am I saying this? Amph amphitheater? Amphitheater? I don't even know what this other one. It's like quai tazel codal quacka, whatever that is. I don't know what language it is. But it was so fascinating learning about the different types of dragons. And it was just really fun. Really, really fun. And so that actually sparked a very, a, uh, very much a painting dragons, which I'm going to show you some of my other dragons that I just decided to freehand. Um, let me say hello to some good people here. Rogue Sisney says, Ren fairs can be um, not so kid-friendly sometimes. This is true. What I appreciate about the Ren fair that we have is that you get a map when you first come in, and it lists, of course, the times that the shows are going on, and it will list which ones are family-friendly, which ones are not, and I appreciate that. Of course, there are some costumes that aren't so family-friendly, but... Um, it is a pretty respectful community there. That's something that I do love about the Ren Fair. That's for sure. Uh, uh, Maria says, I'm between dragons, Kelpies. I don't even know what that is. And mermen. That's cool. Those are three. Those three are my all-time favorites. Kelpie. Oh, there it is. Kelpies are a mixture of horses and mermaids. Oh, I thought they were called something else. Uh, second unicorns and pegasus. Kelpies, a mixture of horses and mermaids. What? I was reading Percy Jackson like last year, and they were talking about the mixture of the horses with the, yeah, like the tails of the mermaid. I thought they had a different name. I must be wrong. Uh, Rogue says, I'm more a fan of Eastern style dragons. Yeah, they're beautiful. A Trouble Green I was just talking about you. Good morning. And saying that I'm looking forward to when you come on the channel and we will be painting. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Yeah, 
a weirvern, wyvern, weirvern. I don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> so uh, if anybody could help me out with that, that would be a weir, weirvern. I just call it a, a, a wyvern. I could be wrong. Play Witcher. It will help with mythological creature pronunciations. I don't know that's a game that I really want to play, though. It's got some stuff in it that I'm just not too keen on. But it looks beautiful. Like, I've watched... I've caught a couple of people on Twitch playing The Witcher uh, just because I was curious to see what they were talking about and doing. And... Um, but I don't know that it's necessarily a game that I... I don't know. I, I'm very persnickety about... I've been using that word a lot of this morning i'm very particular about the games that i play and i'm also very dedicated to just like the top three games that i always return to um and that would be the mass effect franchise minus andromeda uh the mass effect franchise dragon age franchise love love could play that every day all day um and skyrim these are the games that I always return to. Good morning, Sean Perry. Good luck from, good luck, Dragon from Never Ending Story is my favorite. That's right, uh, Falcor. Also a big fan of centaurs. Centaurs are cool too. I remember being in love with Fantasia as a child and the scenes with the centaurs that later on I think they, <laughs> um, I think they censored not I censored them. They 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 reevaluated their uh, artistic choices. <laughs> that way, our Ren Fair is Spanish Renaissance, and it's all family friendly. Thank goodness, that's so cool. Good morning, Miss Martin Uses. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let's see. I have zero desire to play The Witcher for I think the same reasons yeah you know everybody's got their preference and whatever i i like a good story i like i don't know if the witcher has the capability where you make the decisions that ultimately affect what's going on in the future especially if it's going to be a franchise i love that i, I kind of like the pressure <laughs> of um knowing that the, the 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 world hangs in the balance hangs it's in my hands that I, I might lose friends, I might, which is terrifying, but at the same time, it's just like exciting <laughs> for me. So I like, I, I've been playing Ma I'm Mass Effect for years and Dragon Age and like, it's always, and that's what I love because it's a game that while the story, uh, the main plot in and of itself never changes, the story does. And sometimes the plot changes, like the subplots change a little bit um, because some characters die and that affects what you're able to do and what you, um, all your decision making. I, I love that. Uh, Drunk 3PO, hello, says time to play some Fall Guys. I kind of have wanted to try that game because it looks absolutely ridiculous and fun at the same time. I've watched other, like, like many other humans in the world, I've watched uh, other people play Fall Guys. And I just enjoy watching it. There's just something about watching grown men play these ridiculous games and get all excited and <laughs> like, and get upset <laughs> about these little cute characters doing ridiculous things. I think it looks like so, such fun, such fun. Here we go. We just finish off my little background here. This canvas is a little bit different than what I'm accustomed to painting on. So some of the streaks are in there, but I'm okay with that. It's like I tell the kids when I teach them this dragon painting, <clears throat> excuse me, is that there's no wrong way to do a sky. It just makes it for artistic choice there and preference. And also it just kind of makes it look like there's some clouds in the sky. Can never go wrong with some clouds. Just have some fun with it. Just a nice little blend here. Let's see. I started the Zelda game Breath of the Wild and it's really pretty and a good story. I do enjoy the Legend of Zelda games. Um, I've played Ocarina of Time. I've played Majora's ba Mask, A Link to the Past. But I will confess, I have never actually finished any of those, of those games. I started them and I never finished them. This was when I was younger and I just didn't have the patience to figure out the temples and stuff like that. So I, what I would do is actually watch my brother play and so I'm very familiar with The Legend of Zelda mainly because I would watch him play. And uh, I do love, I do love, I've never, I've never played Skyward Sword. I've never played Twilight Princess, Breath of the Wild. 
but I have been told they're amazing. The Twilight Princess, I, that looks really, really, really fun. But um, grown men are just big children. This is true. Most of the time, this is very true. <laughs> While I'm letting this dry, I was going to go ahead and show you some of the dragons that I made, okay, for the Renaissance Fair. I don't have all of them, and one of my favorite ones um, was given away as a prize. Actually, one was purchased, and then one was given away as a prize, um, which was fantastic, but then at the same time, you know, as a creative person, it's always kind of hard to let your stuff go. Um, <laughs> the new spelling, that's right. Let me see here. So I was learning about all the different types of dragons and um, just started to go off on my own thing. What is fantastic, guys, about dragons is that, and you'll see that in a little bit when I start doing the body, is that there's really no wrong way to do a dragon because they're make-believe creatures, okay? And so... <clears throat> Of course, like I always say, there are good and better ways to do things, but that doesn't make it wrong, doesn't make it right, you know. Uh, and of course, we all have to start somewhere. But this was one of my creatures, and I forget, let me look so I don't upset the dragon folk. Uh, this was a drake. That's right. It is a drag, a wingless, one of the wingless dragons. And I just was running out of ideas, and I just needed some pictures to throw up for my... Um, my lesson, my dragon show that I was doing. There we go. There he is. He's kind of like this. <laughs> I don't know why I painted him in the sky. Okay. Um, but here he is. He's kind of like this weird goat creature thing, which he's still kind of cool. I would hate to meet this in a dark alley. That's for sure. Or in the sky. I'm just pretending that he's like jumping for joy. Um, are dragon folk like tree folk? I think dragon folk are worse <laughs> than the tree folk. <laughs> but um, I like how it turned out. I just think it's kind of ridiculous because it does. He looks like he's just jumping up in the air or whatever like that. But that was just one of my own little creations that I just decided to roll with. And then let me get the other name of this one correctly because there are some dragons that have legs but no wings some that have wings but no legs and then some that only have the front legs and that would be what this next one is it's a lindworm worm where however you say that um don't be uh confused I'll, I'll explain why there's a giant tear in the middle of my painting in just a <laughs> second that i have taped together so there's this one i am flipping happy with the way the mountains came out and the sky's pretty cool too. But man, Bob Ross, the man, the myth, the legend right here, teaching folks how to do amazing rock structures since whenever he was airing. I don't want to get the wrong, wrong time frame. But this, oh, see, okay, I have gotten a lot of compliments on this dragon painting, right? I tore it in half. I think this was the last drag. No, this was the second to last dragon that I was going to do. And it was not coming out the way I had thought. Let me get him a little bit closer here. And I was just really struggling with the face. And I don't know. Eventually, he turned out pretty cool. Again, another creature that I would not want to meet anywhere. But I just, I was just so frustrated and so tired. I was kind of running out of time and I still had one more dragon to do, which was the Drake, because I was trying to have the variety of dragon so that I could show. And I see it looks amazing. Love the coloring. Nice. I love that. Thank you. And good morning, Dr. Rachel. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I did, I just, I finished painting it because I always try to make sure that even if I hate my paintings, I try to finish them because things have a habit of coming together in the end. <sighs> a lesson that I am still always learning and forcing myself to, um, to remember. And at the end of it, I just hated it, right? Tore a giant <laughs> rip in the middle of it. And then I came back to it later. And I was like, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. And I've actually, one of my friends told me that they actually liked it with the tear in the middle. They thought that was actually part of the painting itself for added effect. I'm like, oh, sure. Sure it was. 
Absolutely it was. Um, I have another dragon painting somewhere. I can't, I couldn't find it. I don't know where it's at, but it was the one with the wings for arms. Ah, the amphitheater, <laughs> the amphitheater, these Greek words, I can't, I can't even, um, but, um, I, she, and Dr. Rachel says she is, thanks. I will be doing some painting of my own in a few minutes. Excellent. What are you, may I ask? What are you going to be painting? Uh, Sean Perry says, is a copy of that blue Drake painting for sale? It is It is not because I never thought it was worth <laughs> trying to sell. Um, but I might have to reevaluate some of my older paintings and throw them up on my Etsy account. Um, like I said, my links are down below if you want to find different ways to support the channel. And I might, I might reevaluate some of my older paintings and throw them up there and just see where the chipmunks fall because... Um, as we always know, art is subjective and some people like what I do not like and all that. Let me see. My background is still a little tacky here. Uh, speaking also of the dragons and the artwork and the Renaissance fair, part of my show was that, um, I tried to have some like artifacts and things like that. And so like I made, um, a dragon tooth, which was actually really, really fun to try to create and try to just mimic what I found when I would see like uh shark's teeth and i even had a little put a little story behind it i put a little crevice down here a little drain if you will for where i would say that the venom of the dragon would come out and uh, so i was pretty happy with how this turned out i put it on my little um what i call my pagan altar over here it's just a collection of cool things <laughs> But um, it's just because Galadriel, let me see if I can move over here. Galadriel is over here in the center, surrounded by a bunch of earthy things. And uh, But I, I worship Jesus. <laughs> I'm not a pagan. Um, good morning. Like, can you draw us? Good morning. Good to see you. And then Barbie Breeden. Nice to see you. Glad that you're here. I'm waiting for my background of my dragon to dry. And I'm going to show off one last piece that I'm pretty proud of. My first sculpture that I've ever made. Um, for that particular event. You may have seen this on some of my other streams or my other, 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 other videos that I do. Um, is my dragon skull. I kind of got some of the things a little backwards. Instead of painting a skull, all of a sudden I started, or it's painting. Instead of sculpting a skull, I ended up starting to sculpt a head. So again, there's really no wrong way to do a dragon because of the fact that it can be whatever you want it to be. But I'm still pretty proud of and happy how this came out. It's just cardboard. And then I got some clay on Amazon that apparently comes straight from Italy. That's what they say. I don't know. But um, it just turned out really cool. I'm planning on doing some more sculpting this summer. I've got something really cool planned. But yeah, I thought it was really ha uh, cool. Before I put the horn on the front, it just kind of looked like, like a crocodile or something. So I'm like, I need to up this. And it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to. Again, I ran out of time. I'm not good with, I'm not good with space. I'm not good with volume. I'm not good with proportions. <laughs> so I thought I had enough clay and I was going to do like the horns in the back, but I didn't have like, it just, it is what it is. And I'm pretty happy with it. I always thought it would be neat to incorporate it into a costume somehow, like into a helmet or, or like one of those shield guard things on the shoulder. Thought it would be really cool, but um, you know, I never did, so, but it rests beautifully, majestically on my shelf, guarding my clover that desperately needs water. So, but yeah. Um, good morning to all the rest of you people. Sculpting isn't very easy, but it's super fun. Super fun. Hello, Mrs. R2. Hope you are feeling great. Yeah, I'm just make sure I'm not missing. Any. Good morning, Dax. And everybody else that's here, thank you so much again for being here, everyone. I greatly appreciate it. The support. You guys are all wonderful. It means so much to me that you would come out and spend um, Saturday morning with me. Crafts75 says, drunk send me. 
Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and see what we need to start over here. Got it all nice and dry. Yes, yes, yes. So let's see. Get my colors, get my brush. And this is also just to let you know, again, that there's no wrong way to do a drag-in. And I know that a lot of times it's difficult to get started. Of course it is. So when it comes down to creating hum humans, animals, uh, houses even, like there is a basic shape to follow, okay? And so don't be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> no, don't be afraid. You can always sketch things out. I might just do that. I'm going to grab my wee pencil here and just kind of carefully sketch it out. When I teach the kids, though, I just go straight for it just to show them that you can. And I'm going to take a little bit extra time with this. And, um, you know, and again, grab you some merch over there on the Etsy shop. This is no longer available. I'm just saying I make cute stuff. Go, go get some. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Okay, here we go. I'm a little bit sideways. Oh, I am so sorry. Give you guys all whiplash here. Sculpting is how I made the clay master of Sauron's helmet. It's a tough art form. Yes, yes. I, uh, all right. I'm just going to go. I'm a little distracted here. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. My next sculpting project that I'm going to attempt to do, you guys pray for me, <laughs> is I'm going to take my popular Cara Dune drawing and attempt to make her a 3D sculpture. Yeah. So I hope I can make it work. Sadly, I have to bounce. Just had a few minutes before Rogue's Therapy later, everyone. I'll see you in the stream. Hey, uh, have a great day, rest of the day, Rogue. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope that your doggie's feeling better. I do. And uh, Maria says, be bold, be bold, Tabitha. That's right. One of my favorite little sayings there. Um, so go ahead. Let me switch this around. And I'm just going to start with the basic structure of a dragon, which is essentially a noodle. A string floating in the ether. <laughs> Here we go. Make sure I have plenty of room for... go. It's a little off center than what I wanted, but I'm kind of sitting at an angle. I'm okay with that. can always adjust as I go along because I'm not too thrilled about this part here. Let me just see if I can. A lot of this is going to get covered up with um, paint anyway, so I'll just not even waste it. So I've got my basic structure here. Let's see. This is a little too high. Gesture drawing. That was one of my favorite things to do in college when I signed up for my first drawing class. You just get the gist of what you want. It doesn't look very pretty in the beginning, but it's not supposed to. It's just to give the idea. Um, going to watch my on my TV, so I won't be in chat too much, but I'm here. Oh, thank you so much for being here. All right, let's see. Got that. I think I'm going to do something different with the tail. I'll worry about all that later on. I think I'm going to switch the tail up later on. But anyway, I've got my basic structure here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Get some purple. I'm going to do a nice purple dragon here. And just get, like I said, we're just going to get a foundation on here. It never looks very pretty in the beginning. Just like humans, everybody's like, oh, it's a beautiful baby. They're lying to you, okay? Humans are not beautiful when they first come out. <laughs> they lie to you. The Gilk Man, good morning. Happy Saturday, sir. Thank you for jumping on here, hanging out with us this fine Saturday morning. Hope everybody's having a beautiful day. It's a nice sunny day here, but it's supposed to be very hot. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Very hot, very humid. We're supposed to get, I think, near 100 today, which I know for some people, they're like, <laughs> don't be such a pansy. But um, it's just this hot, man. It's just nasty outside. 
Yeah. I think I'm going to do the tail as kind of a wraparound. Like this skulking little little tail. Make it pretty later on. <clears throat> and of course, he's very skinny at the morning. Uh, unfortunately, I have to be somewhere, so I have to run catch up later. Bye, Tabitha. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Mrs. Near, for being here. I appreciate your attendance. That's awesome. That's just, it's more than I could hope for. So thank you. Here we go. Gonna make him a little bit thicker here because he's kind of skinny. I'm just gonna kind of go with it. I tend to try to, I, I tend to get nervous on these live streams when I'm painting because I'll just be re real with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not easy to dedicate the appropriate attention to detail because you feel like you do need to talk to everybody, see how everyone's doing, and you kind of get out of the zone a little bit. And then you do, you get kind of nervous because you think, oh, everybody's watching and they have some kind of expectation from you. And you don't, I do this when I, I have that when I'm teaching kids how to paint um, um, online, that if my painting doesn't look quite as perfect as when I first, mm -hmm started like when they see my example it's like oh i'm a failure somehow but i have noticed like especially with kids like as long as it looks half decent because you're the teacher they just kind of automatically know what you that your painting is fantastic and that you know what you're do doing so that's always a nice little perk there but it's still i i can do some pretty amazing paintings but they just they take such a long time and usually i'm very quiet and i just kind of like get really close to my painting and don't focus on other people here but we're gonna do the best that we can we're just kind of see just gonna see where it goes star cabal nice channel thank you thank you for being here good morning to you here we go i don't know um since we're i would assume that we're all adults here <laughs> that if anybody has read the series, The Wings of Fire. So, because like I said, I teach children how to paint. Um, they, a lot of times they'll, in this class, there's always the Wings of Fire group, right? They're their own little franchise. It's their own little nerd group. And it's so much fun. And uh, they will all of a sudden get so excited and talk about it. I actually would like to read these books. There's like a whole, like 20 books or something like that. And that would just be really fun. I think just a nice, I, I enjoy reading like young adult or children's fiction because there's just no crap in it. Right. At least, at least there shouldn't be any, I just want a good story. Okay. I don't want to have drama and she slept with him and now we're mad at her, her and she's pregnant with this person's kid. I just want a story. I just want to go on an adventure. I don't need all that stuff. Okay. Um, so I tend to gravitate towards children's stories as long as they're interesting, like uh, Fable Haven or the Spiderwick Chronicles, just some good fantasy stuff. And uh, I've never read The Wings of Fire, but I keep being told I need to. I need to read a lot of books. There are a lot of books that I need to read. Um, good morning, Black Market. Dennis, good morning. How are you today? Uh, what age of kids do I teach? I typically teach. So I, I teach on a platform called OutSchool. And um, I typically teach ages 9 to 16. I have different classes for different age ranges. And uh, my dragon painting here, I think I have it from like 10, 10 to 14 or something like that. But, you know, as long as there's an adult present, younger kids are encouraged to take my classes. It's just that they need a little, little extra help um, with all of that. Uh, it's one of my daughter's favorite book series. See? Yeah. It, um, it's very, very popular, very popular. Let's 
see. I do the same. Yes, you need to read. I do read. I read a lot. Tabitha, the Inherent Cycle by Christopher pa Paolini. If you, I have. Um, Dragon Riders with No Drama. Yes. I will have to say that I think, was it the second book? Is that the red book? That one was kind of hard for me to get through because of all the training and stuff like that. But overall, you're right. I need to read that series again because it's been a while and I really, really enjoyed uh, that series. That first book especially. I can listen to that over and over again. Okay, I'm going to lighten this up just a little bit more. It's kind of hard to also see what I'm doing because I have the iPad right in front of me. That's my secondary cam. I took the name off just to see if Rogue Disney would notice. Um, cause he was getting on me on one of my live streams because I labeled it the uh, second cam and he was like, couldn't be more creative, maybe listed as the art cam. <laughs> uh, I did, but I decided to take it down, but see if he would notice. I'll just kind of go with the flow here. See where this takes it's going to be more of a simple dragon today. Not going to do extensive details necessarily on it because I just thought it would be fun to hang out. And like I said, everybody seems to love dragons. So we would have fun. That's why I love the Wind on Fire trilogy. Fantasy adventure, very little drama. Just three kids on an adventure to save their people. <gasps> Let me write this down. Like, yes, give me suggestions, people. Like, I, I haven't read... Let me, I'll, I haven't read a book in such a long time that has gripped my attention to where I couldn't put it down. Let me write this. Um, and so I'm looking for that. It's like the perfect man. I'm looking. <laughs> um, you just want to read it over and over again. Like it's been a long time since I found a book that I just could not stop reading. And I miss that. Why is that so hard? Why is that so hard? Um, they say, though, that, you know, if you can't find the book that you're looking for, then to write it yourself. And so I have mentioned from time to time in different places that I have my own stories that I'm working on. In fact, behind me, behind little Spidey's painting over there, I have a bunch of notebooks with different ideas. You get them written down, but it's just trying to get it just right, just right. Hopefully when I arrive to my new destination, the first thing I'll be doing is visiting the local library. Nice. My library sucks. Okay. I don't like going to this library. The way, all right. The way they have the books organized, tell me that this is not normal. Okay. Anybody else out there, tell me this is not normal. They organized the books by alphabetical order. Nothing wrong with that. But all the books, they don't separate the genres, okay? It's every single flipping book in the library in alphabetical order. I think that's weird. I've never seen a library do that before. <clears throat> I think it's annoying because it just is. <laughs> and so I don't like, and they spend all this money, <clears throat> on this beautiful new library, okay? Because we used to have like this really like small kind of crammed, kind of ill smelling, if I remember right, library. <clears throat> Maybe it wasn't ill smelling. Maybe I just felt like it was ill smelling. Anyway, it was just, it was just not, not a good library. And so they spent all this money on made this beautiful, huge building. And all of their books are just in this one long hallway. Like it's a huge room and all the shelves are just, right in the middle. There's no, there's no, you know, when you go to the library, there's supposed to be like that intrigue and, and it's almost like a maze that you get lost in. I like the experience. I like the experience of the library, let alone finding the book that I'm looking for, right? Like you're getting kind of like the page master. Like I want a library like that. If anybody knows that movie. And <clears throat> I just, 
they don't have a good selection either. And something else that bothers me, if we're just going to go ahead and rant about this a little bit here, is the fact that, good morning, Don. I hope you're having a great day. Is the fact that <clears throat> I cannot trust a library. I cannot trust a librarian that doesn't know words, right? Okay. Like we went up. Uh, I was with my mom at the time and we went and she really loves mysteries. And she went up to the, to the, they rearranged and did their crazy format. And so we went up to the lady at the counter and I was like, Hey, we're looking for, um, mystery books. She's like, we're looking for a good sleuth book. I think is what she said. And I don't know, maybe we're just weird. Does anybody else know what a sleuth is? Like you heard of this, like sleuth, like I, I heard that a lot growing up. It's in the movies, it's in the books, right? And the lady just looked at us like, what? We're like, you know, it, sleuth, you know? And she had no idea what we're talking about. And so we're just like, like, you know, a detective and, you know, these kinds of things. And yeah, see, don't, a detective. And she had no idea. And I'm not, I'm, I'm probably being really harsh, really critical and judgmental here. But I'm just like, if the librarian doesn't even know what we're talking about, and librarians are supposed to be some of the smartest people in the world, let's just be real. I have an expectation from my librarian. Um, would not recommend. <laughs> so. I don't know. It's just the overall experience. There's no getting lost in the library. They out, they, they categorize everything really weirdly. And then, yeah, they don't even know what a sleuth is. Might as well just go to Barnes and Nobles. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. I might be a little bit picky, but that's just me. I, I guess just the day and age people just aren't really interested they just want in and out fast paced i think that might be a part of it they just just in and out <clears throat> i just want to get my book and leave and i guess i understand that but going to the library used to be an experience even when we were kids like they were just i don't know anyway anyway let me get this done i've gone a little too overboard with my color yep <clears throat> that's okay just balance it back out. I've got a little bit of a glare. So it's very difficult to tell, but that's all right. They say that the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. I'm going to say that's lies. But that's just because I don't really like Folgers. But if you do, that's totally fine. But I'm just curious for the people that are either morning people or not morning people. For you, what is the best part of waking up? Like, what is it? Good morning, Lulu. Good to see you. Hope you are having a fantastic morning. Thank you for being here. Lulu's great. <clears throat> but yeah, what is the best part? Is it the first cup of coffee? Is it seeing the sunshine? Is it hearing the birds singing? For morning people, for non-morning people, what is it? What what's the best part about waking up? I'm genuinely curious to hear what other people might have to say. I I I love the best part of waking up for me is just like knowing that I've got an opportunity to do something. Um like the it's a, it's a brand new day, you know, like, I think that's great. I think that's awesome. Um, as Anne of Green Gable said, it's a, uh, you know, a new day fresh with no mistakes in it. And, um, I, I think that's fantastic. Like, I love the idea of being productive Getting stuff done. I don't know. Just the best part of waking up. Just being alive, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I got to bounce. Finally have the last piece for my Asajj Ventures Collections doll. And I need to finish. Well, good luck with that, Maria. Um, you guys, she has a, a YouTube channel as well where she talks, uh, tells stories. 
and she does awesome stuff there. And she also crochets. You follow her on Twitter at the Greek, the Geeky Crochet, and uh, follow her adventures as she creates these pieces. They're pretty fantastic. Hope you have a great day. Um, <laughs> Alasia, now oh, the, your best part of waking up is a text from your man. Sorry, I promise not to be sappy. Also love my first cup of tea. That's right, tea. Interesting, tea in the morning. I don't do that, but some people do. I guess not everybody likes coffee. Namajana, hi. Good morning. How are you? Glad you're here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Is Folgers in your... Is <laughs> I, I'm not a Folgers person. I'm not. I'm not a Maxwell House person. I know. Maybe I'm speaking blasphemy to some people. I apologize, but I just can't. I can't dig it. No. This is a very weak leg back here. I think I should have waited with doing the tail, but that's okay. We'll make it work. This guy needs to do leg day here. It's very, very weak. So it makes it nice thick legs here. And again, that's what I tell the kids. There's no wrong way to do dragons because if you think about like Toothless from um, How to Train Your Dragon, I mean, he's not necessarily a typical dragon. He doesn't have much of a neck, poor guy. And um, just a little spiky thingies on the back of his head are different. And yeah, you know, it's just no wrong way here. I don't do coffee either. Oh, I do love me a good cup of coffee in the morning because I feel like it's like getting a hug from the inside. That's that's what I tell people about coffee. The best part of waking up, getting an early workout before the day gets busy and some time to listen to the preaching of the word of God. Uh, preaching the word. Yeah, I can see that. I Okay, I have tried to exercise in the morning. It wears me out. I typically jog before I go to bed. I know a lot of people are like, yeah, no, I can't do that because that gets me all, you know, gets me all hyper, gets me all wired. I'm the opposite. It makes me sleepy. So I've tried to do it in the mornings because I thought that would be cool, be fun, get a tan while I work out. I'm exhausted. I'm like good for nothing the rest of the day. <laughs> like good for nothing. Uh, the best part of, oh, the best part of waking up is, as you said, knowing that it's a whole new day and I've got lots of time to get things done. Yeah. Just opportunities are just out there and it's fantastic. Uh, can't stand coffee. Tastes like dirt to me. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I never like coffee. So I'll wake up with some chocolate milk or hot cocoa if it's a cold morning. Yeah. Why not? <clears throat> why not? Let's see. I think I'll go, I'll go forward a little bit. Go this way, this way, go this way. Here we go. I, I also like to listen to like podcasts or um, like motivational speaking. I, I do like listening, like some preaching or some teaching. <clears throat> um, about life or, you know, spiritual things, whatever. Um, when I wake up in the morning, like, I just like to get to work. I like to get going. It is difficult for me to, like, slow down sometimes and have my Bible time. I'll be honest with you. It's not always easy because I just want to hit the ground running when I wake up. I am very much a morning person. Um, sometimes there are some days where I'm feeling a little bit more chill and I'm like, you know, I don't mind necessarily to, uh, to sit down and have some quiet time and read my Bible and do some devotions and stuff like that. Um, but sometimes I just do it in the afternoon. You know, there's again, kind of like our dragons really no wrong way. There are good and better ways to do things, but sometimes, you know, they do, they do, they recommend starting your morning out with God. Um, I do try to make sure that whenever I wake up, I at least talk to him before I start the day. So that way my mind is set on him. Like he is my priority. Um, but I like when I'm painting, drawing, when I'm typing things, working on computer, I enjoy um, 
listening to podcasts and things like that, that kind of get me in that mindset. So it's not just like I'm kicking Jesus out the door. I work out during the day early. If you do it, you actually sleep better at night. I sleep fantastic at night. If I go jogging at night, um, it, it helps me sleep because then I take my shower. I'm nice and warm. I'm relaxed. And then I go to bed. Um, so that works for me. Yeah, each person is different. Let's see here. Let me try to get these. Back legs in here. I'm doing things a little differently from my original one. Get my little shoes on here, little house slippers. Loch Ness Monster. Now I'm trying to make a dragon. It'll look more like a dragon as we go along the way. When I get those wings finally up there, the wings are probably my favorite part. Um, <laughs> it's just a kind of a basic dragon this morning, but thank you C4C for stopping by. Just a simple kind of dragon this morning. Here we go. I was asking, for those that weren't here earlier, when I first started, I was asking what everybody's favorite mythological creature was. You know, people tend to gravitate towards dragons for whatever reason. What do you think it is about dragons that fascinates people so much? You know, is it the fact that, because not all dragons necessarily breathe fire. Um, <laughs> Drunk 3PO wakes up to angels singing. That actually sounds really annoying. Um, <laughs> I don't think I would like that. <laughs> but uh, I wonder what it is exactly about dragons that everybody's just like, I love it. I want, I want some more of it. Um, yeah, what is that? Okay, let me grab my little pencil again, wherever I put it. Okay. It's funny when you first start sketching out things for the dragons, especially they do, they start looking like really weird. I tell the kids that it ends up looking kind of like a broken umbrella you're going to see here in just a little bit. So I always, always work through the, the process here because it, it will come together. You just got to give it patience. It is very ugly in the beginning. You don't know what you're doing. You just want to cry, throw, give up. Or like I did with my other painting, as I showed before, you want to just like tear it in half. Let me go ahead. For those that are new, let me go ahead and show you. I just like literally got upset and just tore my dragon in half. And then later on realized it wasn't so bad. I was just being a drama queen. Um, let's see here. Very difficult to see with this glare. Let me make this a little longer here. There we go. Much better. There we go. Looks a little bit better. Still not that fantastic, but we'll wait for the magic to start. Here we go. I'm going to get some of my light paint. Go this way. This is where my favorite part of the process comes, the blending. Oh, I love to blend. Now, of course, I've been talking and interacting with you this whole time. Just trying to see what everybody's up to. But I'm curious. I've talked to somebody before. I just didn't, I don't think that anybody would really be interested in 
watching like a painting video where there's really no talking, but you just sit and watch someone paint. And they were telling me, no, I would love that. I think it's fantastic. Cause you know, we live in this day and age of fast pace and whatever. Would people really be interested in just sitting and watching and having really very little interaction and just watching a painting unfold? Curious to know. Cause it does, it takes, takes some time. And not necessarily in the morning, maybe in the evening, who knows? Because like on my regular videos, I try to keep them around 12, 12 minutes because that's really hard. Um, it's really, really hard to capture all the effort that goes into a painting in 12 minutes and it's kind of like i told somebody it's kind of disrespectful <laughs> almost to the art because like you put all this effort in it and then nobody really cares to see how long it took you to get that shade just right how to balance this that and the third but some people it seems like they like it um anna's painting vids are like that that star wars girl um, she doesn't talk from what I remember. Oh, okay. So some people do. I love dragons. Also a big fan of the, of the, uh, Sphinx. Sphinx. <laughs> and the Phoenix. Yeah. The Sphinx is pretty cool. I, I, Phoenixes are awesome. Pretty too. I just liked winged creatures. Yeah. Look how many of us enjoy watching you make this horrible artwork that many of us end up buying from you because it's so bad. <laughs> we just want to be nice. That's right. That's right. Like that one guy said, you guys are all lying to me. And um, I appreciate that. <laughs> you guys are all lying to me. That's what somebody said. Everybody's just being nice. They're just lying to me to be nice. Don't want to hurt my feelings and that my artwork just sucks. Well, I have to agree. Sometimes it does. But uh, it wasn't a very friendly thing to say. It didn't really offer any criticism, like constructive criticism. Just told me he didn't like what I did. And that's fine. Lord bless you and keep you and all that. Make his face to shine on you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> that troll probably has no talent. It's possible. Most of the time that people that say things like that, you know, let's be real. Surely we've all watched a sporting event. Yeah, I think you know where I'm going with this. And we have judged and criticized these professional athletes for their horrendous performances <clears throat> while we sit on the couch shoving Pringles in our mouths, you know, or something like that. So <clears throat> can't say that I've not in some fashion been where that guy's at. So I guess I can't judge him too harshly, you know. <clears throat> That's not funny. What's not funny? Sitting on the couch, shoving Pringles in our mouths. Here we go. It's almost looking kind of like a butterfly wing here. Which is kind of cool. I encourage the kids too. When we get to the wing portion and the tail and everything like that, I'm always like, look, do whatever you want to do. I'll show you how to do this and that and the third but man feel free to change up your dragon <clears throat> and so i'll have some of the kids they'll make like garden dragons and uh they put flowers all over it and vines and things and one of them made like a cloud dragon it was so so cool and um then there was uh like i said somebody's like i want to make a butterfly wing for my dragon is that okay and i'm like sure i would love that let me know how that looks show me at the end please because i want to know you know because kids can be very inspiring with their creativity because they know no bounds they're not paying attention to the rules a lot of times and that's fantastic in many ways for when it comes to art anyway i mean obviously there's sometimes where you're like okay that's not how we do this because this looks weird but Sky is the limit. And who's to say? Who's to say? Always encourage creativity. Um, 
Yeah. You know? I always try to have, tell people there really are no, I mean, there are, there are dumb ideas, let's be honest. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, we need to still voice our ideas because you never know what opportunity you might be missing out on. I like to tell people that in the Bible, my favorite disciple is, for maybe a silly reason is Andrew. Nobody ever talks about Andrew. Poor Andrew. But I think it's in the book of Mark. I could be mistaken. <laughs> I get them confused sometimes, is the fact that when Jesus was going to perform the miracle of feeding the 5,000 plus folk, right? It's this tiny little portion in the Bible where we all, we all, most of us are probably familiar with this, this story, whether you believe it or don't, um, about Jesus feeding a bunch of people with five loaves and two fishes, right? Well, it's interesting to note that in one of the Gospels, it says that Andrew came up to Jesus and the other disciples. And I'm going to kind of paraphrase this here. I don't have the exact wording. But he basically said, hey, there's this kid over here that has two fish and five loaves. But what are they among so many people? Like, well, that's probably a stupid idea. They can't even feed everybody. And Jesus then said, go get that boy. I wonder how different the story would have been if Andrew hadn't said anything because Andrew came to Jesus with a, let's just be real people. He came to Jesus with a stupid idea and God used that stupid idea to tell a miraculous story and to encourage other people. And so I often try to remember that with some of my silly ideas. Now, if your, if your ideas obviously are not sound, they're going to hurt somebody if it's selfish reasoning, but if you're really trying to help somebody, you know, it's okay to voice that idea. It might not be the best idea for that situation, but, you know, trying to help. And you never know what's going to happen with that. So, uh, you know, I, I really like that story because I, like I said, I, I can, I can sympathize. I can be there with Andrew. Like I've had so many stupid ideas and it's like, this isn't going to work out, but what about this? And sometimes it, it, it works out. Sometimes it was exactly what was needed in that moment. Now, sometimes when it comes, I said I like blending. Sometimes when it comes to the wing, I like to leave it a little uneven. So it actually looks more like the skin is like folding and stuff. I've always loved dragons. I drew a dragon and loved it so much. I got it tattooed on my back. Oh, well, that is some dedication right there. That is some love for that. There we go. There we go. I'm going to let all this dry. <clears throat> It's pretty neat to be able to have your own artwork become artwork like that, I would think. There we go. While that is drying and doing, I'm going to create some gray here. going to go ahead and create some shadowing underneath of my dragon. It's still kind of bland looking, I know, but I always tell the kids, I'm like, the devil's in the details, you'd be surprised how it all comes to pass. I'm always surprised, I'm always shocked myself. I'm going to just make the whole ground and everything here. Let me just kind of make some landscape here. And then I'll put shadow underneath of it. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. So you just kind of roll with it. Just kind of see where it takes you. Clean up the dragon tail a little bit too. Oh, I like that. It's been nice to paint today. I haven't really been able to do a lot of painting lately. I've been doing um, a lot of drawing. Some of you maybe follow me here, like you subscribe to the channel or you follow me on um, Instagram and I keep, keep up with my reels and things like that. So I've been in a drawing mode. And it's been really, really fun. Um, but at the same time, 
I've missed, I miss painting. And um, I really want to get finished with my picture that I've done of my friend, Brooke. Some of you might be familiar with my story with Brooke. Uh, my, my little journey with helping out my friend as best as I can, who um, suffers from CRPS. She is getting married in two weeks or a couple of weeks, whenever she's getting married sometime in the future here, she's getting married. So happy for her. And, uh, Just trying to do my part, use my artwork to try to bring some awareness to her struggle. And um, I'm really excited about this new painting and I'm doing it in oil. And I just I haven't had time to dedicate properly like to, to the art piece itself. And um, I would have loved to have had it finished by her wedding. I still could. It's in a couple of weeks. If I dedicate my time, I would love to have had it finished for her wedding and present it to her as a gift. Every time I do an art piece of her, she hangs it in her room. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. It's just takes so long and I'm still learning and I'm trying to get these particular projects when I do those kinds of paintings like the one back here and everything I really want to make sure I get it perfect today's is just again it's like a simple simple dragon and I still would love to make it look fancy and everything but like it is what it is this is just for fun just hanging out seeing doing talking thinking and uh but that one I'd really love to. I might after this. I'm I'm just I'm feeling it. Like I'm like I'm gonna pick that up. I'm just gonna leave that here for now. Yay, good for her. God bless. Yes, absolutely. She um she had a heart monitor on for a really long time because she was developed an arrhythmia because of her her condition. And uh, fortunately came back and I think it kind of calmed itself down. And so she's doing better with that. Hey, Ado, good morning. Good to see you here. We are doing dragons. Absolutely. Love some dragons. I hope you're doing well, man. I really wanted to enter into all that giveaway stuff. You know what I did? I waited too long. That's what I did. But I'm sure there were a bunch of beautiful entries and uh, congratulations to whoever won to that. ado has got an awesome channel. Fab works down there. He um, oops, he does really cool stuff over there. Star Wars room building and all that kind of stuff. Fantastic, amazing stuff. Has a podcast where he interviews other creative builders, Star Wars builders. I mean, it's just an awesome community. Awesome community. All right, let's put a head on this thing. I tend to mess up the head. That's all right. We'll give it a shot. And again, thank you for spending your Saturday morning with me. I know there are other things we all could be doing. But it's Saturday. Let's just kind of hang out. I'm trying to just provide some wholesome entertainment. Just see how everybody's doing. Just catch up a little bit. Let's see, what are we going to do with this head? What are we going to do? Don't want it to be too clunky. Oh, no. Went and messed up. Here we go. Let's see if I can recover. Let's see what we can do. Just kind of let the... Let the brush speak. Just let it kind of do its thing. It's not so bad. I don't mind that. Nice big tooth there. Let me raise that up. <laughs> I 
JT, good morning. <clears throat> Another awesome person that you should check out his channel. JT just started his YouTube channel and he's over 100 subs right now. I'm going to be on his channel this coming Thursday and we're going to be talking, I think we're talking Bigfoot and some other stuff. So that should be, <laughs> that should be fun. Good morning, JT. Here we go. I think with this dragon, I might try to do some horns. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe like some Maleficent horns or something like that. I've got some really cool people planned for um, August coming on. Some more YouTubers teaching YouTubers how to paint. So I've already got some lineup for that. I'm happy to have people on. Going to be reaching out, looking for suggestions, just seeing who wants to learn. And a lot of times it's just, like I said, just hanging out. Going to be listening on my earpiece while we paint some brackets behind the altar on a ladder. So no chance. It's all good. All good, Dex. Thanks for being here. And I might put some little wispy. Let's just see where this goes. I'm curious to see. I'm just going to give it a whirl. making this different from my original one. Let's see. I might totally ruin this. That's okay. I'll give it some hair. Just kind of... Just have some fun. <laughs> and that's just kind of what it is with dragons you get your fundamental shape down and then you just explore and just see what happens draw from other creatives let's see here Looks a little strange. <laughs> I kind of like it. Oh my goodness. This is weird. I like it. Now I'm feeling it. Now if I have hair on the head, I got to put it on the legs or something like that too. Let's see. Put some down here. And that's something else too, gang. Like when you're painting and let's just say you make a choice that you are not necessarily thrilled with and you don't know that you can you like recover from it as far as like paint over it and you're just not sure. Well, then one of the secrets is that I have learned personally, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe Dr. Rachel can confirm since she is an artist as well, is that sometimes you take what you've done elsewhere or, you know, in one section that you weren't necessarily planning on and put it somewhere else in the painting. So then it looks like it's cohesive and like it was meant to be. So it's not just one blotch over here, but if you put a bunch of blotches somewhere, then it looks like it was on purpose and it actually flows together. What's the dragon's name going to be? I'll let you guys decide. Uh, Tom, the name, <laughs> that's the name, Tom, the dragon, all oh, Tom, the dragon. I don't, I don't know. Does this look like a Tom, everybody? We'll see. <laughs> Let's see. Dragon with bed head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some more dragon in the morning. <laughs> dragon with bed. I like it. All right. Let's get some more hair over here on these, these legs. Little tufts. I like this. A hairy dragon. Why not? Why not? I like it. There's some... I need, a, I need a smaller time to bring over the other brushes. Let's see. I need... There you are. I see you hiding in the background.
Just kind of wisp it in there. Dragon is hair fireproof. <laughs> oh, it looks like me when I wake up in the morning. Dawn, this is what uh, this is what you look like. Well, pretty fierce, if I might say. <laughs> There we go. One detail equal mistake or tried something new. Same detail in multiple places equals intentional with a creative perfect pur purpose. Exactly. Nobody will ever know. That's that's the thing about like with art and everything like, you know, consistency is key and then learning how to recover. You know, there are a lot of life lessons that can be learned with artwork when you don't when things don't go according to plan, you make them fit the plan. You just reassess and you make them fit the plan. That's right. I don't know where to put these on the back legs. I don't really want to put <laughs> hair back here. Uh, we'll come back to that. Let me come back to that. Okay. While I'm figuring that out, letting that speak to me here. It's going to get some more black. Okay. Going to create some. This is too wet. Here we go. I want a fierce dragon here. Crazy wild bedheaded dragon. Mistakes can lead to an awesome outcome, at least in cooking it does. Yeah. Apparently not so much in baking. I I have been told. So um <laughs> Baking requires a little more, more science. Probably why I like cooking more. Let's see. Champagne was discovered by accident, as was Velcro and donuts. So I see a reoccurring theme here. So also with potato chip. Look at that. See some of our favorite mistakes. I feel there's a message in there. Uh oh, I smeared my paint. Oh well. We'll just put a fly there. Rogue Disney was discovered by accident. <laughs> Did you discover him by accident or just in general? Baking is more of a science, kind of why I don't. Exactly, Rogue. Exactly. Exactly. We're still going to have to do that pancake art thing. Yes, we will. I haven't forgotten about that. I think that would be fun. Although you've already one-upped me. You've already practiced. Yeah, just throw in some details. So was my toasted fluffer nutter. Ah, gosh, I can't remember last time I heard somebody have a fluffer nutter. My goodness. There we go. Steady hand. Steady-ish hand. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Get some tines back here. Again, I want a fierce dragon. But she's already pretty fierce. So, I... um. My church had VBS this week. If you don't know what that is, it's vacation Bible school. The kids come. It's kind of like kind of like camp, only they don't stay overnight. Teach them songs and have a Bible lesson. We play games and sometimes there's skits and we feed the little urchins and everything. Anyway, had this uh, girl come. She was a visitor. Super sweet. Her name was Ariel. Her name really wasn't Ariel, but she didn't want people address her by her real name. 
all right. So, but she just like slay everything. Like everything. Like she she said a Bible verse right. She slayed that. She put paint on. We had, so uh, to answer your question, Don, our theme was Wild West. It was really fun to like, decorate and do everything um i was i was director of um decorations so it was a lot of fun and so like she would we would spray cowboy hats as a craft like we had they could decorate their own cowboy hat and she would slay the paint and all this kind of stuff and i told her yesterday was it yesterday i finally asked her i said ariel do you know what that word means and of course in true fashion she described slang with slang and, um, and I'm like, yeah, but what does it mean? I said, to slay is to kill. And she's like, what? No, no, it's not. I'm like, it is. I said, but that's what you're saying. I said, you slayed that. You killed it. You nailed it. You look good or you conquered whatever it was that you did. <laughs> you did. But man, I tell you what, if I heard slay one more time, I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> slay this. I thought slay was a little bit outdated too. I didn't think the kids were saying that anymore, but apparently some of the urchins do. So now she was, she was a good, wonderful girl. It's just funny. You know, when you, I'm not accustomed to hearing that all the time. And then when you hear it every, I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. Like, you know, every five, three to five minutes, it's like she's slaying something and she's not like, it's just such a exaggerated <laughs> form of expression. Um, C4 C says, I remember VBS when I was young. Yeah, it's fun. We had fun. We did. I was exhausted. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was ready to go home. That was that well, I want to go home. <laughs> like, that's what I was like pretty much every night. Um, but it was still good. Right, let's put some claws on here. Make these house slippers look a little bit more fierce. More vicious. JT owes me two dollars. I'll just leave that up there for JT to look at. Um, you can figure that out. <laughs> she slays while Santa Claus slay. Exactly. That's why you know. Of course, I knew what she meant. But when she first said that, I was like, "So, what are you talking about? Are you talking about Santa's ride or what?" And of course, no. I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't even know. You don't. Just sit down. You don't know what you're talking about. So we care. We had um, my church did mega sports. Couldn't help out because I worked too late to get there. Sports. Ooh, that's cool. I think next year they're already planning. Um, we're gonna do like a. I think they're gonna do a safari, safari theme. That's pretty exciting. That'll be neat. Um, let's see. What else am I doing here? Oh, we'll figure out what I'm doing with this tail. Let's see. I guess we'll just kind of. I'm going to do a barb if I can. Try not to mess this up, Tabitha. That's all right. Um, yeah. That must be for the missing shoe JT took back in January. I was the lone Catholic in a heavily Jewish, what? In a heavily Jewish, our growing up had to drive two towns over to go to church, so we didn't really do many activities. Yeah, um, I've always pretty much gone to church, like that's like a half an hour or so away. You know, just do what you can. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it'd be really cool to put some, like, detail on his skin and everything but, like that. But like I said, I'm going to keep this pretty pretty simple and uh, finish off. Well, I say I'm going to finish off. I'm going to give him, like, a, a zombie eye here. Let's see. Well, my brush would work. Just a nice white eye. Let's 
see here. Again, thank you everybody for coming and hanging out. I always appreciate that. I'm always amazed at the people that come and want to watch me paint or uh, watch, watch me show other people how to paint. It was super fun. Of course, some of you will know I had Drunk 3PO on my channel last time, which was an extra special episode because he was actually, he was traveling and uh, he happened to be or be able to come and hang out with me in the studio. So that was cool. It'd be really fun to get another YouTuber in the studio, but you know, we all know that we come from different parts of the country and everything like that. But uh, looking forward to teaching other YouTubers. Let's see, what else can I do? <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to go for it. Where is it? I want to do, I want to do some smoke. All right. Let's see here. Get just a little bit of paint. I'm going to do some little puffs. I've got to. I feel it. Like geysers coming up from the ground. Did anybody figure out, are we going with Tom for this dragon? Is that what we're, we're naming, naming the dragon? <laughs> do we want something else? Does it, now that it's pretty much finished, do we, do we see a different name? Uh oh. That's what happens. Yeah. Abu Nas. Oh my goodness. Good to see you. Had to pop into the show. Love the, to the talented and beautiful Tabitha. I see you putting together another beautiful artwork. Much love to you. Keep up the good work. Thank you for stopping by. Good morning. Hope you have a great and fantastic day. That's so awesome. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Put a little one up in here. All right, we'll just go with the fan base here. We'll just go. We'll, we'll just. Uh, the wild hair is making me think of Einstein, so I'd vote for Al. I love it. Al the dragon. <laughs> Like the most basic white name we can find, Al. I love it. So let it be spoken, so let it be done. This is Al. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. Okay. So, well, no, I would love to put something back here to balance this out, but... Uh, Kind of, or see what we can do. Is there anything curious for future streams where I'm probably painting by myself? Is there anything you guys would like me to paint? You would like to see me, how I would try? I'd love to do like a rapid fire kind of thing. I say that with paint. <laughs> but I would, I would love to try to do like, I go on and you guys tell me what I need to draw or what I need to paint. And I just kind of whip it out and just kind of see where it goes. It would be kind of stressful as far as the creativity part because it's like, you know, artists tend to try to be perfectionists and everything like that. But I think it would be good, a good growing and learning experience. So just saying, I think that would be fun. I might have to try one of those. That might need to be a nighttime thing, though. I don't know why. I think think that there and this kind of helps cover up that little sploosh that I have there from my my gesture drawing there we go 
I'm signing you up, Abu Nas, for painting stream. I would love to have Abu Nas on here painting with me. <laughs> that would be fantastic. If he would be up for it, I'd be happy to teach him how to paint something. Absolutely. It'd be a lot of fun. Okay. Put that down. Al the, <laughs> Al the dragon. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, a little bit of paint got out, but that's okay. There we go. Not a perfectly clean edge, but are you the type of artist to keep all of your work even though it may clutter up the house? Yes. Um, sort of. I would say for a majority of it, yes, which is why um, it's fantastic that I've recently found um, C4C. I have found canvas paper, if you will. As you can see, this is really thin. And so instead of having to buy canvases that are, um, you know, an inch or a half inch or whatever like that wide, I can just get... Um, these nice little canvas pieces. And that way it makes it a lot easier like for framing and stuff like that. So there's Al. He's not perfect, but he's cute. He's fun. I love it. Just a simple dragon painting to just hang out with. Like I said, it'd be super cool to put some more details in this, like some scales on his body and uh, all of that. But uh, that was just, just a nice little fun little morning stream to hang out with Al. Me and Al. The dragon <laughs> um and then or i i sometimes i i paint on water watercolor paint uh watercolor paper to help minimize the clutter so that it's just all nice bunched together i still have some leftover canvases or i repurpose them sometimes like it just depends on what it is i watch a bunch of different artists on youtube and one of my favorite things to watch is when they're given a random shape and they have to make it into something yeah we might have to do a challenge run one night and uh, see about that. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. So, well, here we are. Thank you so much. It's been an hour and a half, and I appreciate everybody that came out to the stream this morning. I uh, I am. I'm always overwhelmed uh, by the showing and, and the support and everything like that. Be sure, like I said, to hit the like button if you enjoyed this and, um, you know, Tell, tell your friends, you know, come hang out. But uh, looking forward, like I said, to hanging out with some more YouTubers next week, next Saturday. Going to have um, this girl here. It's going to be great. And uh, got, like I said, some people already lined up for the month of August. Uh, some people I haven't asked yet. Some I have. So I don't know how many in the month of August, I'm going to be having on, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be going to be so cool. And that's probably something I'm going to be doing today is already looking for the artwork. So if anybody's interested, what I do here when I teach the YouTubers how to paint is that I reach out to them and say, hey, I would love to do this. I would love to hang out with you and teach you how to paint. Would you be down for that? All you need to do is tell me what you would like to paint. And then I will make up a mock design and then I will send it back to you and say for approval and say, do you like this? Is this what you would like to learn how to paint? And I send you the supply list. I always try to keep it really simple, really basic. Try to stick with the primary colors if I can. So that way um, we can make our own paints. Because not everybody wants to have a bunch of paints hanging out in their house for a long period of time. So, um, and then that's what we do. And I send them information and we get together and it's super, super fun. Yeah, here we go. This was fun. Looking forward to next week. Red wall. Yep, she's kind of already given away. I do have a sneak peek on one of my short videos here on YouTube of the um, of the piece that Alasia and I are going to be doing next week. It should be fun. Should be wonderful. Thank, good job. Thank you for the stream. This was fun. Excellent. Again, thank you so much for being here. And again, if you want to support the channel in any way you see fit, being here is already a great encouragement. Being here is already huge support. If you want to do anything further, feed the artist. The links are down below. But until we meet again, folks, have a great day. Live long and prosper. And uh, I will catch you, catch you next time. And uh, have a great day great rest of the day. If I was watching this video, I would like it. 
would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. That's a 